Verbum Divi. The anniversary Holy Mass of Sacred Heart Convent Gaul is sponsored by a faithful family.
Centennial Jubilee of the Sisters of Charity of Jesus and Mary in Sri Lanka, with a profound sense of thanksgiving, we experience that God is love. In his love for us, the Father calls us together as Sisters of Charity of Jesus and Mary. He unites us in the heart of his son, Jesus, whom he sent into the world to reveal his love. In a concrete and tangible way, this was lived and witnessed on the 24th of November, 1896, the day which marked a momentous and sacred event in the annals of our congregation. It was on this day, 125 years ago, that the first Sisters of Charity of Jesus and Mary arrived in Gaul. And this at the invitation of his Lordship, the late Bishop Van Reet, who was the brother of the then Mother General of the Sisters of Charity, Reverend Mother Bernadette Van Reet. His Lordship had wanted religious sisters in his diocese to see to the education of the young girls and care for the poor. The response to this missionary challenge and appeal was generous and immediate. After a time of preparation, the first five pioneering sisters set out for Ceylon as Sri Lanka was then called. On their arrival in Colombo, they enjoyed the hospitality of the Good Shepherd Sisters for a day, and then, accompanied by some of the Jesuit fathers, they set out and reached Gaul. His Lordship, the Bishop, priests, a large gathering of parishioners and well-wishers had assembled at the foot of Mount Calvary to meet and welcome them. The sisters were escorted to the cathedral Gaul for prayer. Noteworthy is the fact that showering the miles, the departure from Belgium had also been marked by a service of prayer in the cathedral of Ghent in Belgium. In true traditional style, the sisters were then brought to the small house, which was to be their convent. Adapting to and settling in, in a strange land and a strange milieu, was not easy. However, with great generosity, the sisters threw themselves unstintingly and unhesitatingly to the ministry that awaited them, as the requests were numerous and required immediate solace. Their lives were exemplary, characterized by a total surrender 
to the ways of the Lord, compassionate love for the poor, steadfast commitment, dedication, simple lifestyle, and joyful activity. This little seed of insertion spread throughout the land, but this was the first mission of the Sisters of Charity in Sri Lanka, the Sacred Heart Convent Goal and School. The Congregation of the Sisters of Charity of Jesus and Mary is a congregation of pontifical right, founded in Belgium in 1803 in the village of Loendegam in the Diocese of Ghent. The approbation for the congregation was given in 1816 by His Holiness, Pope Pius VII. Our pioneering sisters brought to the island the charism of the congregation, that of compassionate and merciful love. This is embodied in the motto, Deus Caritas Est, God is Love. Our founder, Reverend Father Peter Joseph Trist, saw this love for the poor as a legacy from Christ himself. He said, what we inherit from Christ is love. Love for God his Father, love for each other, and love for all people, especially the poor who are abandoned by the world. This spirit has been handed down to us by our co-founders, Reverend Mother Placide, and all the sisters who have gone before us. We live our vocation according to the spirit of St. Bernard and St. Vincent de Paul, prayer and action. Today, we joyfully celebrate this wondrous occasion with grateful hearts. We thank our Heavenly Father for his mercy, fidelity, and love. We thank our pioneering sisters, sisters Amelia, William, Alexandra, Marcia, and Alberta, and all the other sisters who have gone before us. And we thank every sister of charity who has given her utmost best for the spread of the charism of love. We look to the future with unwavering hope and trust in God. Let us evoke the blessings of the Holy Spirit by lighting the traditional lamp. I reverentially invite His Excellency, Most Reverend Dr. Brian Udevge, the Apostolic Nunis for Sri Lanka, Right Reverend Dr. Raymond Vikramasinghe, Bishop of Gaul, Very Reverend Father Charles Sevavasam, Vicar General of Gaul Diocese, Reverend Sister Ajita Fernando, Provincial Superior, of Sisters of Charity of Jesus and Mary, Reverend Sister Malkanti Fernando, Mother Superior of SHC, Reverend Sister Sandhya Fernando, Principal of Sacred Heart Convent, Dr. W. W. Gamage, Honorable Governor of Southern Province, Mr. G. Piantu Sahabandhu, Honorable Mayor of Gaul,
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, as the Savior of the all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the 
let us pray. O God, who always listen mercifully to your servants in distress, we humbly beseech you as we give thanks for your kindness that free from all evil, we may constantly serve you in gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. first reading, a reading from the book of First Kings. Blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people Israel according to all that he promised. Not one word has failed of all his good promise which he spoke through his servant Moses. The Lord our God be with us as he was with our ancestors. May he not leave us or abandon us, but incline our hearts to him, to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments, his statutes and his ordinances which he commanded our ancestors. Let these words of mine with which I pleaded before the Lord, be near to the Lord our God day and night. And may he maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel, as each day requires, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God, there is no other. Therefore, devote yourselves completely to the Lord our God, walking in his statutes and keeping his commandments as at this day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Obagay Pilitura.
gospel acclamation. Hallelujah! 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 loved me so I have loved you remain in my love A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch that withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Bishop, I thank you once more for this occasion. Dear Sisters of Charity of Jesus and Mary, teachers, students, and parents, Excellency Mr. Governor, your worship, the mayor 
all military authorities, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I would have visited this diocese a little after my arrival to your country. Your bishop, dear Bishop Raymond, had invited me. He was gracious in doing that. And we concluded arrangements and fixed the dates precisely for last May. But then the COVID-19 situation worsened. I am indeed happy to be in the diocese at last and also happy to celebrate this 125th anniversary of the arrival of the Sisters of Charity of Jesus and Mary in Sri Lanka. Thanks also, Sister Ajita, Fernando, Provincial Superior, and your council for the invitation. But here again, we had a difficulty with the date because as we just had at the beginning of the Mass, it was to be on the 24th. But I had already accepted another invitation from the Silvestro Benedictine monks for their 175th anniversary, which we celebrated two days ago in Kandy. You had to shift the date of this celebration from the actual date in order to facilitate my presence. That was magnanimous of you and of Bishop Raymond who paid a great and diligent attention to the arrangements. Today's celebration is rightly held here, the Sacred Heart Convent, the place where the first community of sisters began their mission 125 years ago at the request of the then Bishop of Gaul, Bishop Van Rit. The sisters set up this school and other schools later on to provide formal education to girls within the diocese. Dear sisters, while teaching remains your forte, I understand that you also run centers for the care of the disabled and for the elders. I just saw one now. And the education of children within, with learning difficulties. In addition, your mission includes crash and girls' homes, pastoral and social work. Thus, your congregation is involved in a whole range of charitable works spread out in different dioceses of the country. What a great way to be branches of the vine as we just had in the gospel. Branches of the true vine, that is Jesus Christ. You are a true instrument of God. In the name of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, I express heartfelt appreciations to you. Some of the children trained by you have taken up leadership roles in various fields in the country, fending for themselves and their families and serving their country. This is one of the reasons for you to celebrate 
and rejoice today. And we rejoice with you, dear sisters. I also learned of the dedicated services you rendered for several years at the Apostolic Nunciature, the House of the Holy Father in Sri Lanka. Unfortunately, that was before I came. How I wish I would have you again. I used the occasion to reiterate the gratitude of the Holy See to you, sisters. Through your congregation, God has indeed manifested his love to many, not only among Catholics, but everywhere your ministry is being carried out. With the motto of the congregation, Deus Caritas Est, God is love, you have continued to bear witness through your apostolate that God indeed is love. Indeed, charitable actions are the reflection of the love of God being manifested through man, through us. This takes me to the gospel that we have just read. Jesus presents himself as the true vine the true vine that produces good fruit. And he presented his disciples, we, as the branches through which the good fruit is delivered. He is the vine. We are attached. The disciples, we are attached to the vine so that we produce the fruits of the vine. Interesting. As a branch cannot bear fruit all by itself, but must remain part of the vine, neither can we unless we remain, we Christians, attached to our leader, our vine, the Christ. The fruit that Christ produces through us is not necessarily mangoes or oranges and all that. But they are the good virtues like love, justice, honesty, tolerance, peace, good services, and so on. So that looking at these fruits, looking at what we do, the services we render, God is love, Deus caritas est, looking at your mission, the world will really know that you are true branches attached to the true vine. In a way, we are the hands with which Christ works and we are the leg with which he walks we are parts of Christ's body he is the head we are the members on the day of our baptism the church grafted you know the word to graft to graft a fruit uh, sorry um, a tree you take a branch and graft it and attach it so for us Christians, on the day of our baptism, in a way, the church grafted us, attached us to the main tree that is Christ. This is an analogy. We shouldn't take it too far. So, if we are grafted to the true vine, we produce the fruits of the vine. This is why St. Francis, the cells of cells, writes, the branch united and joined to the trunk bears fruit not by its own virtue, but by virtue of the trunk. Now by charity, 
we have been united to the Redeemer as members to the head. When you look back, dear sisters, you realize how the efforts made by your congregation has borne much fruit over the years. It is like the branch that is attached to the vine. Jesus tells us that only an intimate living fellowship with him will bear much fruit in our lives and in the lives of those around us. But you know what? Some branches are attached to the trunk, to the main tree. But still, they do not produce fruit. Why? Outwardly, they are joined to the vine. But as they are dry, they do not receive life and nourishment from it. They are bad branches. They also disrupt the growth of the vine and hamper the quantity and quality of the fruit produced. While pruning, the farmer cuts them away. We have bad branches everywhere, as we have good ones. We could also have them in the religious communities. We could have bad branches in our personal lives. Those things that disrupt our growth spiritually and even physically. What do we do with them? Those things that are obstacles in our lives, spiritually, even physically. If I have cholesterol, then I know I have to cut off fat, fatty food. So what do we do in our lives? We prune, we cut off those things that are obstructions, not only spiritually, but also in our daily lives. One must have the courage to make these choices, to be able to prune, to, to cut off distractions, and then concentrate and cultivate the important things in one's life. It doesn't matter whether you were a Catholic or you belong to any other religion or you don't belong to any religion. We must know how to prune, to cut off distractions in our lives. It is the pruning of our vices it is true, of course, in the spiritual life, because holiness in this sense is like a sculpture. You know, sculpture. The statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary that we have here, I think they are sacred heart. Sculpture, carved things. Our spiritual life, in a way, is like a sculpture. Why do I say that? The great Italian painter and draftsman of the Renaissance, Leonardo da Vinci, defined sculpture as the art of removing, removing, cutting away. The other arts consist in adding something. We put on something. For example, we add color to the canvas in painting. Stone on stone in architecture, like building a house. Note after note in music, etc. But only sculpture consists of pruning, removing, of taking away the pieces of marble that are in excess, so that the figure that one has in mind can emerge. 
this is what perfection means. The act of removing, eh, like a sculpture. By removing, we make, we remove the useless behaviors, the useless attitudes, useless pieces of our lives. We remove them, cut them off, we stop them. This acts in the spiritual sense often lead us to sin and to fall. Let this, dear sisters, be one of the resolves that you make on this great occasion of your jubilee. Being able to cut off the pieces, the bad things that disrupt your growth personally and as a community and as a congregation so that we will not be like dry branches but good branches attached to the good vine, so we produce good fruits. As we know, jubilees are celebrated usually to have a break and start again. You have done 125 years. Today you stop. You look back to what you have achieved all this time. You look back to the mistakes you have made and then, I say, you make the resolve, the resolution to correct, to improve on your successes and to prune, cut off your mistakes. You chose this gospel of today and it is a wonderful piece. It helps us to, ex to explain what we are doing today. So, dear sisters, I am sure this jubilee will enable you to make evaluations, live out past mistakes, and forge ahead with a new enthusiasm. I pray and wish that you, as a province, be reinvigorated to experience the love of Jesus and continue to reflect that love in your mission and breaking new grounds in serving those in need. Deus caritas est. It is an occasion to pay tribute to your pioneer sisters for the work they were able to do over the years under difficult conditions. While reiterating my sincere thanks and congratulating you on the 125 years of service in Sri Lanka, I wish and pray for God's abundant grace for your future endeavors and that you continue to be good branches, deriving your vigor from the true vine that is Christ. In conclusion, I wish to use this channel and verbum television I learned is here with us to remind all our faithful and all Sri Lankans, as I did this morning in the cathedral at the reception ceremony, to remind everybody not to forget that unity is strength. There is certainly the need as citizens of this country to join hands in working towards the welfare of everyone. As the Holy Father Pope Francis pointed out in his encyclical letter on fraternity and social friendship, Fratelli Tutti, we have common needs as human beings. Despite religious and linguistic differences, we are a global community. We are all in the same boat. We are one person's problems are the problems of all. 
No one is saved alone. We can only be saved together. Let us not forget this. I wish that Sri Lanka continues to be the pearl of the East from all perspectives and particularly in its rich history and civilization and harness the benefits of its variety of religions and peoples. Dear sisters, now I read the message, the apostolic blessing of the Holy Father, Pope Francis, which was sent to you on this solemn occasion. The Holy Father, Francis, cordially imparts the requested apostolic blessing to the Sisters of Charity of Jesus and Mary on the occasion of the 125th Jubilee anniversary, invoking through the intercession of the Virgin Mary an abundance of divine graces. Thank you for your attention. Lord God, we thank you for this opportunity we have to present our prayers to you. You told us to ask, we shall receive, seek, we shall find, and knock, the door will be opened unto us. We come and present our entreaties. Apage Pilitura, Swamini Apakane Aknya, Savada the Menever. Swamini Apakane Aknya, Savada the Menever. Deva Premier Nirantaravama Jeeva Manavana, Deva Raja Vatina Kambaling Piribun, Nava Samajak Pikirima Sandaha Vehesena, Upper Sudu Sabe Sudutum Pietuma Atulu, Poojaka, Pavidi, Sielu Dena Ha, Sielu Magijanatava Veta. Avesi, Shudad Magapin Mima, Labena Pinisada, Sami Apuriapia, Savada Lamelva Ungal Badil, Andevere Engel Manra take it alum. Andevere Engel Manra take it alum. Emadinatic Kaha Manra de Wong. Emadinatin Talever Hell, Otrume Yudanum, Samadana Tudanum, Makali Nalanuka Hu Lake. Tuyavin, Arul Varangalal, Nire Tarala Vendrumendru, Ireva Umme Manradi Hindrom. Adivere in Manradi Hindrum. Our response Lord, hear our prayer. Let us hear our prayer. Let us pray for the congregation of Sisters of Charity of Jesus and Mary. Lord, bless all the Sisters of Charity all over the island, and the mission that entrusted to them by the Lord himself. May they grow into fullness and bring into completion in the day of his coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, 
Let us pray for our dear school. Let the Konam Anima Unna be the foundation of all our endeavors. May the Lord bless our dear sister principal, the teachers, students, parents, past pupils and well wishers. That all of us may bring glory to God with one heart and one soul. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those who have gone before us for eternal rest. May God grant beatific vision to our dear departed sisters of charity who have served in our country and all the reposed souls of past teachers, students, parents, and well-wishers. May their souls rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, we thank you. There are so many other things that we could not present here, but you know them more than we do. We ask you to answer these our prayers and other prayers of individuals here present. All this we ask in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God, all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. church. O Lord, who gave us your Son to rescue us graciously from death and from every evil, accept, we pray. In mercy, this sacrifice, which we offer you in thanksgiving for our deliverance from distress, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore, he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, 
and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, once supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Oh, 
As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember Lord, your, remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together, Francis, our Pope, Raymond Vikramasinghe, and our bishop, all the bishops and the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Joseph, us, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Thank you. 
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but on this day the world, and my soul shall be healed. Catholics who have received Holy Communion at least once may come forward to receive Holy Communion. A humble request to other believers to remain seated and to join the Communion hymn. Kangula, 
Let us pray. Almighty God, who through this bread of life are pleased to free your servants from the bond of sin and in your compassion to restore their strength, grant us to advance without hindrance towards the hope of glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. be seated for a while. On this blessed occasion of the 125th anniversary, may I very respectfully invite His Lordship, Right Reverend Dr. Raymond Vikramasinghe, the Bishop of Gaul, to express his words of greetings. Your Excellency, Reverend Sister Ajita Fernando, Provincial Superior, beloved Reverend Sisters, my dear brother priests, honorable staff members, students, ladies and gentlemen. I wish to join the chorus of thanksgiving for the 125th anniversary of your congregational our first of and having recognized the great need of a woman present in his diocese, invited your sisters to be in Sri Lanka, and hence your first community was planted in the city of Gaul. Not only that, Bishop Van Reet also requested your community to train an indigenous group of sisters of a new congregation which he was going to initiate. Yes, the first fruits of that labor are the sisters of the holy angels now spread also in some countries. This day, after 125 years of your presence, 
the Sri Lankan Church join you in thanking God for the growth and the expansion of your religious family in number, in number of dioceses in Sri Lanka and abroad. You served also at the Nunciature, as His Excellency mentioned, under different apostolic nuncios at the Nunciature. Your dedicated services primarily in education, then in the parish pastoral ministry, caring of elders, including my brother, especially adults, children, and also a unique service in the prisons, demonstrate your charisma to bring life to everyone you meet. I will not waste my time today to continue to um, sing your praises about the different types of apostolates you are doing even in our parishes here in Gold Diocese. After 125 years, I trust that you have great days ahead to do a thorough soul searching again, which His Excellency uh, spoke about, not that two of us spoke the same thing at the Nunciature, but he reminded you of a soul searching with the guidance and whispering of the Holy Spirit to understand and see where a missionary religious family at this present historic moment is found here. Your deliberations on contemplation, apostolate, and leadership should keep your focus and bring the young generation sisters alive, active, and authentic. Let me add also something away from the text. My dear beloved sisters, your, your services, your commitment for the education of children and adults is exemplary. And I would encourage Provincial Superior and the council members to concentrate more on that apostolate which was your primary one when you landed in Sri Lanka. So helping the present principal, thanking the Lord for all the dedicated principals and teachers of your school is a must on a day like today. And I'm sure with a very small number of um, representation of the teachers and the students, we are here to express that broader gratitude to and, and uh, wish uh, the Sisters of Charity and thank the Lord on your behalf for the wonderful services with lots of challenges, I must say, uh, that the present day uh, principal and the sisters and the staff members are uh, extending their services to this city of Gaul. The presence of your sisters has been a great blessing to our diocese. My humble prayer for you is that you may be blessed with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to read, understand, and interpret the signs of the times as you continue to serve for the spread of the kingdom of God. Courage, my dear beloved sisters. Keep going. The Lord is with you. I bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I now invite Reverend Sisters and the students to present the Jubilee Souvenir and the magazine to His Excellency the Apostolic Nuncio to His Lordship, the Bishop of Gaul, and to Reverend Father Vika General, respectively.
may i now invite very reverend sister ajita fernando the anniversary holy mass of sacred heart convent gol was sponsored by a faithful family